Behind me is the Drew Damage Repair Instructional Unit. Basically a big metal box which we flood. It's a mock-up ship, so the internal layout resembles pretty much what you'd see on the majority of Royal Naval ships that are in the fleet today. Uh, primarily used for practical damage control training. This is serious kit. I am, I'm really, we, we're gonna have to go in, we're gonna have to repair some holes in the side, and I'm a little bit terrified. It's just normal temperature water. We're gonna freeze when we get in there. We've got four sections of the ship split over three decks. Uh, we've got complete control over water levels, smoke and lighting levels. We can control pipe damage, deck and bulkhead splits. We can roll the unit up to 15 degrees either side of upright at a variety of different speeds to simulate different sea states. So today the beginners are going to be getting just five degrees of roll, which, which will seem like a lot to them. Instructional staff will be getting the full 15 degrees um, to make it harder. The very first thing the 120 PSI breach and it's pointed at us and the very first thing we have to do is go You could that. feel the pressure from two metres away just from yeah. the air it was chucking at you, never yeah. mind the water. I, I didn't quite realise how much you'd feel it when I went to grab the, um, the wedge bag. First hit, Zulu 1 will consist of a small deck split um, and a large multi-split in the ship's side. So first stage leak stopping on both of those will be softwood wedges. Getting pushed under, who got the reach underneath as well? I got that. That was you! Because <laughs> I tried that and I just could not find the bridge. No, no, it was really tricky and the, the first time I went down, couldn't find it either. I knew it was between your two shoes. Yeah. Could not for the life of me get the wedge in and all the time I was uh, trying my best to be buoyant as possible, which is not useful. Anyone in the Royal Navy that is going to sea to serve on a ship will have to complete training here on the Drew. Intent being to be able to confidently enter a flooded compartment, carry out first aid leak stopping, be familiar with the equipment they're going to be using, effect permanent repairs and remove water from the compartment. The multi-split. You were up there for a long time, Matt. You've got a lot in there. Lots of hammering, but it, as the water's filling up, you yeah. can't find where the holes are because yeah. the water goes above where they are. And it's yeah. lots of... It's you were up there for a while? I was pushing. Yeah, you, you, were hold, you yeah. had to Pretty take much. all the weight of Matt pushing against you. Did you yeah. see the bit where my foot started flailing yeah. off yeah. the side? I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't bring it back into the pot. Head of pressure is similar to what you would see a couple of decks below the waterline. So, so the water pressure is we believe to be realistic. Um, some of the pipe damage, we do pump the water in, simulate a high pressure seawater breach or fluid system pipe damage. Props to Tom for actually splitting a wedge as well. I in the heat of the moment. Really forgot about that, that was. But it won't fit. <laughs> that was in yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, we can, we can do that. Second hit, you're going to see a, a three inch rocket hole. Uh, it's going to be in a particularly awkward position behind a locker. So we're looking to see somebody inside the locker, possibly with teammates backing them up while they look to get wedges into that hole. We've got a safety number on the gantry watching the exercise and controlling the exercise. They've got complete control of the water level within the compartment so they can make it, they can make it higher if you're doing well to make it harder for you. Or if they're feeling kind, they can drop the water level. Um, they can also remove all the water very quickly in the event of an emergency. They've got direct communications to the unit driver who's in the driver's cab. The driver can turn on and off instants they have control of all lighting and smoke levels, how much the unit is rolling. Now it's clean water, similar to a swimming pool, so we chlorinate it, um, it's stored in a sump directly below the unit and then we pump it up to the header tank prior to an exercise starting. 
The cupboard. The, 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 I, we all tried it. Yeah. I've still got water in my ear because just full force. I managed to get my head in and sort of round so then the water's all here missing my face. Yeah. You can't but then see you can't, anything. The wedges kept diverting left and right. <laughs> Yeah. I was inhaling water most of the time, so even yeah. though I had the wedges in the right place, I got exploded back out of the cupboard because yeah. I forgot to breathe. But then you, you then you got it. Yeah, eventually. How did you? What did you do to that to make it work? Wedges on the left-hand side of the incident, and then push them towards the stream. And it was that kind of arrowhead formation. So you put two in. Yeah. Then one in the middle. Hammer it in. It all widens out. That's it. And because it was the wedges were given to me in that formation, and then a hammer fall <laughs> Well done, Mal. Like. It worked. We're looking for a second stage build on the deck split, which will just be a vertical shore utilising a, a rubber, steel and timber sandwich pack on the deck. Uh, the importance of damage control training, ultimately flooded compartments will remove buoyancy and stability from the ship. Too many flooded compartments, the ship could be lost. Of equal importance, there's going to be equipment in each compartment which directly affects the fighting effectiveness of the ship. In wartime, we need to recover real estate um, to allow us to be able to fight the external battle. Uh, and peacetime, we're, we're looking to maintain enough buoyancy and stability to keep the ship afloat. Control conditions in a simulator, it took four of us five attempts to close a breach at the back of a locker. But the professionals are in there now. They're going to do that and beyond in five minutes. It took us 20. And oh. that, was, that was on like the easiest levels. I've seen Royal Navy trainees in there when I did the recce for this. And the trainees, you know, it's, it's the working together. It's knowing that there is going to be something, because we were chaos. Like, we, there was teamwork in there. We left an entire hammer behind at one point. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> so we did manage to do it. They trusted us with hammers and... <laughs> <laughs>